Hey guys, we're here at the Braille House. Take one, Braille Origins episode, Siete. So today for this episode of Braille Origins, I brought a photo album. Well, I guess I'll start it out of like the story of me realizing or first like seeing or first saying or first thinking, I'm gonna be a skateboarder. So I'm pretty sure I was six years old and I was living in Grand Junction, Colorado and I'm in the back seat of my parents' car, we're driving down the street and I look out the window and I see three kids skating down the street. They're like in like super 80s skateboards and then they're like skating and they turn without like doing a tic-tac, just like a carve turn into an alley and I was like, boom! Mind blown. This is the craziest, coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm pretty sure I was six years old. I don't think I actually got a skateboard for another three years or so. I was probably like, I was probably eight or nine when I started skateboarding. And I am 33 years old now, so you guys can do the math on that. Um, so that was that. And then I moved from Grand Junction, Colorado to a very small town in Montana called Red Lodge, Montana. And that's where I got my first skateboard. That's where I first started skateboarding. I have some pictures of my very first skateboard around here somewhere. It's a fish board, like, you know, the shape of the board is that of a fish. <laughs> and it was a Karma Toshif um, dog town board. Super, super sick. Anyways, I brought this photo album because I wanted to tell this story. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, of the little town that I grew up in, it, it's a very small town in Montana. So it's like people there hunt, they fish, they play football and ski and snowboard and stuff. It, was, it is a mountain town, so I definitely did a lot of snowboarding. It was like every winter you would snowboard, every summer I would skateboard. But in terms of like activities to do there, there's definitely skateboarding is very looked down upon in the community for sure. I went to high school there and I was in this group. I think it was put on by the Boys and Girls Club. Anyways, I was in this group and basically what ended up happening is I was like, I need to have a skate park. This town needs a skate park. It's a very, very small town. There's barely any skaters there, actually. By the time, like, when I first started skating, there was no skaters. And then by the time I was a senior in high school, there was a few skaters. But I just thought it was so sad that there was no skate park. And if anybody wanted to learn how to skate, they didn't have anywhere to go. There was very few street spots in the town, maybe like a total of two or three. If you're really stretching it, maybe four. And you were not allowed to skate at any of them. So you could go there, you'd get kicked out. You would never really get a ticket, but you would definitely just get kicked out, right? So I'm part of this Boys and Girls Club group. It's run through the high school as well. And I get this idea, I'm gonna go to city council and I'm gonna write a whole plan and I'm gonna ask city council for land. It's a very small town, so you pretty much know everybody in the town and you already know like that plot of land right there is owned by this person. He's friends with this person. He's part of the city, blah, blah, blah. So I, I went to city council and I did this whole, whole proposal and I asked him for a plot of land and $25,000. And they said, sure, go ahead. Sounds like a great idea, a great thing for the community. And I was like, boom, <laughs> mind blown, right? So it's interesting, there's this, there's this article. It's the Carbon County News. And it's titled, Skateboarder Full of Talent with No Place to Go. And it has a picture of me board sliding a bike rack, which is like pretty sick, actually. <laughs> I would do that now and it would be pretty, pretty sick. Red Lodge, talented enough to draw corporate sponsors, skateboarder Aaron Cairo has difficulty promoting his sport in the area. Cairo, a junior at Red Lodge High School, has been skateboarding since he was 10 years old. Oh, there I said 10, huh? He has won three competitions in Billings and Great Falls and has received corporate sponsorship for the past two years. In exchange for using company products while he competes and sending pictures back to his sponsors, Cairo receives monetary compensation as well as monthly product packages. 
That's interesting. They said I got monetary compensation because I don't think I ever got any money. I definitely got a lot of, like I had to like literally, I was sponsored by Bones Wheels and I wouldn't skate all, all winter, right? But every month I would get a box from Bones. By the time the summer came, I literally had a garbage bag, like a full size garbage bag full of brand new wheels. I was like, this is the best thing ever. So it says his sponsors include a skateboard shop in Billings as well as Bones Wheels, Reds Bearings, and Grind King Trucks, all skateboard companies located in California. Well, except for the skate shop, which was in Billings, Montana. Although he is serious about his sport, Cairo views skateboarding as a hobby, realizing that without higher level competitions or a skateboard park to practice, at in the area, he has little chance of advancing to the next level. Since most of his sponsors encourage him to compete in larger competitions in order to gain more exposure, Cairo only competes once or twice a year, the closest being located at Vancouver, Canada, which is about a 20 hour drive away. Anyways, it's very interesting. I'm not going to read this whole article. I just think this is so fascinating. It's fascinating to look back on this after all these years and after everything I've been through. I've been through some like serious ups and downs in the industry. I think people think that I just like did YouTube videos or whatever, but I have been a part of many companies and made many video parts and been, yeah, been, been around. So it's been a really fun, really awesome, incredible ride. And then this one, this was in the Billings Gazette. So Billings is the biggest city in Montana. Red Lodge is a very small town. So Billings being the biggest city in Montana, this was on the front page of the Billings Gazette. And it says, getting it done. And then it has this picture of me doing an ollie off this launch ramp with these little kids like looking, looking up, which I think is so rad. It's like classic. It says, aspiring skateboarders look up to Aaron Cairo, who not only is an accomplished boarder, but has been influential in establishing a town skateboard park in Red Lodge. So this whole article, goes on to tell the story of me going to city council, asking them for the land and the $25,000. And then it goes on to have, this is a photo of me helping them build the skateboard park. The skateboard park was just like a little dinky park with some metal ramps. It did have a butter bench though. That butter bench, I learned so many tricks on that butter bench, it's sickening. So it says, skateboard park is now a reality. City contributes $25,000 in land. And then just a few other articles about the skateboard park. This is the ribbon cutting where I was there and I cut the ribbon. And my friend Mike Crabtree doing an ollie off the ramp. So anyways, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud to have created this. Um, a few years afterwards, this is a whole new article about them expanding the skateboard park. And it's very interesting to me because in the town of Montana, like I said at the beginning of this video, skateboarding was looked down upon. It was like, if you played football, you were cool. If you skateboarded, you were a loser. In fact, the parents in the town hated it. They literally felt like you were going to grow up to be a bad person. And I was like, this is just so not the case and it's so such a weird viewpoint, right? So I got this skate park built and there were people from the town that had this viewpoint about skateboarders just being terrible people and they would go down to the skate park and they would start to watch and they would watch the kids and they would write into the newspaper and they would say, oh my gosh, it is so cool to go down there and see the camaraderie between the skateboarders. They're not fighting with each other, they're not yelling at each other they're actually helping each other to learn more on their skateboards. And that was like, man, it was like, oof. That got me right there because I literally got that whole skate park put there. And now it's this whole community is using it and the whole community has changed their viewpoint on skateboarding. They changed their viewpoint from skateboarding being this terrible activity that everybody is gonna hate you and you're gonna make nothing of your life if you do it to, whoa, look at these kids. This is like awesome, the camaraderie and them just coming together and having fun and enjoying their skateboarding. It's really like, it really blew me away to see that. So anyways, that is the origins of the origins of the origins. That's like going all the way back 
before the origin of the origin of the origin. That's the Braille origins. Boom! So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope we can find some good footage to throw in there. I don't know if we can or not. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely click right here and go to the playlist. On this playlist, there's gonna be a bunch of videos just as good or even better than this one. So you're gonna to wanna to watch all of those videos. Please click that subscribe button, click that like button, and let's push skateboarding all over the world. Let's get skate parks put in your community. Let's put them everywhere. Let's get more people skating. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I cannot thank you guys enough. It is incredible. Your guys' backup and support is incredible. We could not do this without each and every one of you, so I thank you. Signing off, I'll see you next time.